The Inuit people, indigenous to the Arctic regions of Greenland, Canada, and Alaska, have a unique genetic history shaped by their adaptation to one of the harshest environments on Earth. Genomic studies have revealed that the Inuit are closely related to ancient populations from Siberia, with their ancestors migrating across the Bering Land Bridge into North America around 5,000 years ago. In terms of lifestyle, the Inuit have traditionally lived as hunter-gatherers, relying heavily on marine animals such as seals, whales, and fish, which are rich in fatty acids. This high-fat diet has been crucial for survival in the Arctic, providing the necessary caloric intake and insulation against the cold. The Inuit engineered kayaks and developed sophisticated tools and clothing, such as fur-lined parkas, to protect themselves from freezing temperatures. For this video, I gathered the raw genomes of 36 ancient samples associated with Paleo-Eskimo cultures of Siberia and North America from a 2019 study called Paleo-Eskimo Genetic Legacy Across North America, and ran them through my trait predictor tool for DNA analysis. Regarding their Y lineages, almost every male carried Q1 haplogroup aside from one sample who carried Y lineage C. Almost every sample was predicted to exhibit a mongoloid phenotype although four samples were predicted to exhibit Melanesian phenotypes. The most common predicted phenotype was Tonkinesid. Here is the average predicted phenotype. Almost every sample was predicted to have dark brown eye color, although a minority of samples were predicted to have regular brown eyes, and one sample was even predicted to have hazel eye color. Every sample was predicted to have black hair color. Every sample was predicted to have straight hair texture. Almost every sample was predicted to have a snub-shaped nose, although one sample was predicted to have a Greek nose shape. More than half of the samples were predicted to be shorter than average in height. The Paleo-Eskimo samples were predisposed to an average rate of dopamine reuptake and intermediate dopamine levels, as well as intermediate stress tolerance. The Paleo-Eskimo samples were slightly predisposed to a higher availability of D2 receptor sites, which predisposes them to such conditions as schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. The results suggest that the samples selected were strongly predisposed to bipolar disorder type 1. The Paleo-Eskimo samples had a strong predisposition to autism, which is similar to what we observed prior with the South American samples. The Paleo-Eskimos were also predisposed to a lower level of empathy, which is also similar to what we observed prior with the South American samples, and goes in stark contrast to the high empathy of sub-Saharan Africans and intermediate empathy levels of Europeans. The Paleo-Eskimos were predisposed to a higher odds of cardiovascular issues. Regarding muscle type in ACTN3, the allele distribution in Paleo-Eskimos was roughly similar to the allele distribution in the Japanese population, suggesting that the distribution of sprinter and endurance runner genotypes within the Eskimo population is comparable to the Japanese. The Paleo-Eskimos were predisposed to higher odds of epithelial cancers based on 8Q24 genotypes and higher odds of autoimmune disease based on HLA genotypes. The Paleo-Eskimos were predisposed to significantly higher glucose levels, which is bad, but lower levels of LDL cholesterol, which is good. As a group, the Paleo-Eskimos were also predicted to have very high levels of vitamin D, which likely reflects an adaptation to an environment that lacks sunlight for a significant part of the year. They were predisposed to shorter telomere lengths, which reflects a predisposition to shorter lifespan, which is a negative predisposition. They were also significantly predisposed to syncope, which is loss of consciousness due to a sudden loss of blood flow to the brain, and were strongly predisposed to hemoglobin E disease with 12 out of 36 individuals carrying risk variants for it. All blood types were found among the samples studied, but the most common blood group was O, followed by A. One person scored the rare blood group AB as well. Thanks for watching my video. Links to research data as well as data needed to replicate this research will be in the description of this video. Don't forget to leave a like and share. Goodbye.